The Fiji Women's Crisis Center has recorded a spike in cases of domestic violence in the past week. Center coordinator Shamima Ali revealed some alarming figures in a Zoom interview early this week. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, all types of violence against women and girls, particularly domestic violence, has intensified. The Fiji Women's Crisis Center recorded around 80 cases of domestic violence in the past week. As you know, the same thing happened and it's a worldwide phenomenon that during lockdowns, you know, we've got such high rates of violence against women in this country and throughout the world. So these times, these times are worse for women, particularly with lockdowns, social distancing and so on. The perpetrators are in the house with them. So throughout the world, this has been a phenomenon, a rise, an intensification of violence, and we are no exception. The same thing happened last year, April, March, April, towards the end of, and then this year also in the first two weeks, you know, the first two weeks, the calls, and I'm not talking about the 1560 line. So this is a worldwide phenomenon wherever you know we have high high rates of violence a country like fiji has got very high rates of violence and we double the global average so when things like this happen the 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 it's the the the, the whole uh, um prevention of covid 19 you know the social distancing being in your own bubble uh and 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 so on and lockdowns and so on they're really very conducive uh, to an increase in violence, a spike in it, and that is what we are seeing. The perpetrators are at home. So what? And this year, uh, this week alone, from the 26th of, uh, from the time that we started locking down, from the 19th to the 25th of April, mm. uh, we saw a total of 62 cases, uh, the phone calls. And I'm not talking about the 1560 line, the government, the one that we contracted to run the toll free line, I mean, that has got its own numbers, you know, quite high, but this is just our lines throughout Fiji at our five centers. So 62 cases of domestic violence. And then the last week we have had 78 cases of domestic violence. So that's quite high for two weeks. And this is phone only. And, you know, and, and a lot of women can't phone, they can't come in. And you're seeing uh, things like um, women being put out of their homes, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of uh, 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 rape within within the home uh, with everybody present and, you know, the guy is insisting on having sex and so on. Um, a, a lot of coercive, the, the intensification of violence. Violence is really intensified because he's there all the time now. And then uh, a coercive control, a lot of control over her movements, um, even treating her like a slave. Uh, you know, getting her to work on the plantation while he is timing her and really that kind of control. It takes a lot out of her and then she's expected to put food on the table. Some of this, not all, some of these horrible men don't want to go and get food, expecting her to do it. If she doesn't, she is punished. So women have to go and beg. Women have to, you know, so that it takes a huge toll on their mental health. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a lot of emotional abuse, swearing and so on and so forth. And then they have to look after the children in extended families. They are living with, uh, you know, extended family members who have expectations of daughters-in-law and so on. So a lot of this is happening. So there's a lot of phone counseling that is going on. We have had to uh, remove women from their homes and, uh, in, and from lockdown areas. Mm -hmm. And I really want to acknowledge the Fiji police force in this that they have been very, very good. We have not uh, been forced, my staff have not been sort of had to go out and get these women out and go and negotiate at the border or anything. Mm -hmm. Phone calls have to the police have really helped in taking women for medical, even taking them from one containment area to another one to, to, to a family's place, non-containment area to, to a family's place. So we have really had a lot of help from the few cases where we have had to remove people. Women had to get away. And they've been picked up from parks, from roadsides and so on. So, and then we continue um, with that, uh, with the looking after her. If she's staying with relatives, we ensure that we also supplement their grocery allowance so that she doesn't become a burden to families in this at this point in time because everyone is just surviving um and also we have women 
uh, who we have assisted for a long time, but new ones also who have been put out of their homes by their husbands and partners, de facto uh, partners uh, who uh, are in need of food, baby milk, diapers, sanitary pads and so on. So we're also helping out in that way. For survivors of domestic violence, home is probably the most dangerous place to be. The crisis center is working with other NGOs to assist women and girls. We're going to continue with our 24-hour lines, liaising very closely with the Ministry for Women, you know, people in the EVO task force, Ending Violence Against Women task force. We have that, we are having regular Zoom meetings the GBVIE, that is the Gender-Based Violence in Emergencies Group. And that is made of, of UN women, all the service providers, the shelters, shelter people, uh, Empower Pacific, MSP, uh, and Ministry for Women. So we're all getting together and have plans in place. We are doing a lot of uh, media work, a lot of uh, messages that are going out regularly we'll continue with that we'll ensure that the 1560 line the toll free line is going to be in operation three of our staff are men uh, are handling that one so we're going to make sure that's all that we can do and then work with the um the 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 service delivery protocol the national service delivery protocol that has got, got into operation a lot of people government and non-governments we have not non-governmental organizations have signed on to it, health, uh, police, uh, you know, uh, the, the Ministry for Women and so on, education. So we're also reactivating all of that so that we can work in tandem and support and do referrals and just going to intensify that and in advocating and lobbying for that regularly. Seeing uh, things like um, women being put out of their homes, uh, you know, uh, a lot of... Uh, um, uh, uh, rape within within the home uh, with everybody present and you know the guy is insisting on having sex and so on um, a, a lot of coercive the, the intensification of violence violence is really intensified because he's there all the time now and then uh, a coercive control a lot of control over her movements um, even treating her like a slave uh, you know, getting her to work on the plantation while he is timing her and really that kind of control. It takes a lot out of her and then she's expected to put food on the table. I'm very, very concerned, though the Ministry for Health is has assured us, has reassured us that they are being taken care of. But we are hearing other stories. Um, a crisis centre uh, through the COVID Alliance, you know, uh, we are working very closely with Friend in Lotoka with Sashi Kiran, and uh, we are also raising funds. We've raised funds to ensure that women who are in the lockdown and the workers who are in there, that they get what they, is theirs by right, with, that, that, that they are looked after. So, you know, we're working together to be able to do that, raising funds. And so um, uh, Sashi Kiran at Friend and the staff at Friend are procuring things for us. And, uh, you know, we raise funds and we send that over in that way. We are taking messages from people, texts, and then we are referring them to friend to be able to do that. You know, diapers, people have come to the hospital, uh, maybe because they're, you know, after birth, giving birth, they leave very quickly. So they don't have enough clothes. They did not come prepared for this lockdown, for diapers, for baby powder, for you know, all those kind of things. Maybe, you know, drinks for the woman, like Ovaltine, cocoa and things like that, and milk and all those things. So, you know, uh, yeah, so that's how we are working with other NGOs, like-minded NGOs, and they're trying to, you know, also working with donors uh, to because people who are on the ground, the NGOs that are working on the ground at community level, no one knows it better than us. And the leaders who are, you know, traditional leaders and so on, who are on at the ground level. And, you know, our, our opinion should be sought. And I'm glad that people are doing that. And, uh, and uh, you know, so we're trying to uh, also talk to donors about, you know, funding of, of women's things and women's reproductive health. We really have to look after that, you know. So we've had to look after women from Yasawa who were pregnant and who could not travel during the ninth month. So somehow they got to our bar play, uh, centre. We took them over for their tests and everything else. One stayed with us till last week. So she's now moved to Nandi because she's got her in-laws there. So we are able to move her to Nandi now and the other two had relatives. So, you know, we're also very concerned about women on the island who cannot come in like to Lotoka now, you know, for, mm. for 
distance and, 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 and what happens if they have complications on the island, particularly if they don't have a birthing clinics there. She called on Fijians to take care of their families, especially during these trying times. I would like to say to my brothers, you know, all my fellow men who are in this country, please, this is a time when we should get together Look after your family well. Look at what your wife is doing, the woman, the women in your house, what they are doing. Appreciate that. Help them. Be part of that family. Contribute. What your, your contribution is so important in this. We're all in this together. And I'd also like to say to men, because they're not just perpetrating men, they are perpetrating men, but there are also men who are going through mental health issues. So if you are doing that, please, if you call our lines, we will refer you to our men's line. Uh, lines. Five of our male advocates are handling five men's lines, referral line, lines. We are not giving the numbers out, but if you do call the crisis center, the referral will immediately be done. So please do not take out your, it's a very frustrating time for all of us, I'm sure, government including. So, you know, if you want to talk to someone, please call us, we will do the right referrals. For the women, please do not suffer in silence. We are here to assist as much as, as far as we can go, given all the restrictions, you know, and the constraints that we have. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to say the police are behaving really well in this. They know what to do and we will use them, you know, for as long as we need to use them. So please, and call 1560. That's the toll free line or any of the crisis center number lines. But please, 1560 is the number 1560, call that number. I think what I would like to say is that let us all, we're all in this together. This is about our country. You know, we shouldn't be where we are right now, but we are. Let us help the people in the Ministry of Health let us do our part, wear a mask, use sanitizers, wash your hands regularly. I know it's tough to do when you're poor. Bottle of sanitizer, it can feed most people for a week. I know that soap and water and so on. But so the best thing is to keep still, stay in the same place, stay in your same bubble. It's hard sometimes when you're 10, 15, 20 people in a one bedroom house. It is hard, but take care of each other and try not to move around, move out of that bubble. Please keep safe, everybody, and keep Fiji safe. That's a close-up for this evening. For questions and feedback, please send us an email on news at fijitv.com.fg. Remember, stay at home and in your own bubble. Until next week, stay safe and good night. Mm -hmm.